How's it going, everybody of the DC Universe? Welcome back to a brand new DC News Roundup video. And today we have got quite a bit to be going through. I'm talking like brand new information on Creech Commandos because they had the panel today at the Anim Annecy Animation Film Festival. And we've, we've definitely got to go through that. We've also got a bunch of DCU live action stuff to go over, especially with Superman. And as I was literally about to press upload on this video, turns out, guys, there's a new DCU project, an animated series with the return of Blue Beetle. So, so we're going to have to get into that. I mean, blessing and curse, you're not going to get me this time. I, did I just jinx it? Is another thing going to happen? But we'll get to that later in this video. So, as always, guys, you know how it is here. It's time-stamped if you want to skip around. Do me a favor. If you watch The Boys, check out my review and breakdown of the first three episodes that I uploaded yesterday. If you're watching it, join me over there. Give me your theories. Give me your thoughts on the new season. And all I have to say now is another plug. Maybe consider subscribing if you haven't done so already to stay up to date with more videos just like this. So, guys, Creature Commandos, as we know, the first project coming out of the DCU. It is canon to the DCU and we have just got a bunch of information. Now unfortunately, as I kind of half expected here, there's not really a trailer. Those who attended the Annecy Animation Film Festival did get to see artwork and, and actually a couple of clips of uh, some animation, I believe. People who also even attended got to see the opening of Batman Caped Crusader, so I'm kind of hoping that maybe we might get some more things out of that fairly soon, just judging by the fact that Batman Cape Crusader is coming out in August. But as for Creature Commandos, I've got various things to read out here from various different places, from the Hollywood Reporter to Nexus Point News to Madhu on Twitter who attended. But initially, Gunn introduced the presentation for the animated series via a video message at the Annecy Animation Film Festival on Friday, explaining that he was unable to attend due to being in Atlanta to shoot his forthcoming live-action feature Superman. Hailing from DC Studios and Warner Brothers Animation, Creature Commandos centers on a ragtag group of monsters led by Amanda Waller, voiced by uh, Viola Davis, of course, and is set to debut on Max in December. And knowing, it's <laughs> similar to what I said about The Penguin recently, knowing that's uh, releasing in September and I'm going away for five days, wouldn't be surprised if that drops then, but as for December, yeah, I'm getting married. So, knowing my luck as well, Creature Commandos will probably drop when I'm kinda busy. But anyway, to get back on point here, it's a cornerstone of the legacy we've been entrusted to carry at DC Studios and plays an integral role in the vision for our future storytelling, Gunn told the crowd about the show. Since taking the reins, our true north has been to bring DC film, TV, animation, and gaming into alignment under one single banner and bring a sense of unity and consistency into the DCU as a whole. This frees us to create a range of products that are diverse and compelling and deliver great standalone entertainment experiences on every medium, while also being part of a larger story that we're telling within our unified DCU. So, kind of some talk that we've heard before. We still haven't heard anything about video games as of right now that are canonically set in the DCU, but yes, Creature Commandos characters will be maintained in live-action DC projects, namely an example being Frank Grillo reprising his role in Peacemaker Season 2, but we've also got some very interesting information about certain characters from Creature Commandos appearing in another DCU project, which I'll get to in just a second. So Gunn continued, what this means in practical terms is that our characters can move in and out of animation or jump into a game or onto the big screen, but they will remain consistent throughout. Same character, same history, same actor. The new series picks up directly, so directly after the Peacemaker season one finale, which leaves Waller with her hands tied operationally, meaning that she's no longer able to get away with putting human lives on the line to carry out her clandestine, morally questionable missions. Uh, instead, she recruits a ragtag band of misfits, not unlike the Suicide Squad and Peacemaker. So this is kind of what I was thinking as well. I have said that I suspect the ending of Peacemaker will mostly be canon. This refers to what Gunn has said before with how, yes, Peacemaker Season 1 was in the DCEU, but certain strands of canon will be maintained in the DCU. Not everything. Clearly, we don't have Ben Affleck as Batman and things like that, 
But I was saying with the end of Peacemaker Season 1, knowing we're getting a Wallace series, we did have Argus being exposed by Leota Adebayo, Wallace's daughter, and I, I did feel like that was going to tie Wallace's hands a little bit, and this is how I got into how she might start the agency, going into Checkmate with Sasha Bordeaux's casting in the DCU. That's another character in Peacemaker. I recommend watching this video if you want to know all about that and what could actually be happening, even linking into DCU Batman and maybe Deathstroke. So it's good to know that Gunn's saying, yes, right after Peacemaker Season 1 here, she can no longer really get away with using humans after Argus has got exposed for what they've been doing with Task Force X. So instead, she uh, creates the Creature Commandos and uh, takes advantage of those guys. But I still think she's going to worm her way to maybe create the Agency and Checkmate going into the Wallace series. But that will be said after Creature Commandos and even Peacemaker Season 2, which is, you know, after Superman now. So Gunn noted that what makes this show's leads different is they are actual literal monsters and I can't wait for you to meet them. Creating this series has been one of the absolute joys of my life. Now other details that we got from Nexus Point here saying Creature Commandos is dark, humorous, but never goofy and unsentimental. Adult themed show with political storylines, which I think suits Gunn's specialty there. So it is dark and humorous, but at the core of it, never kind of straying away from being unsentimental. And that's where I always say he, he does a great job at blending, you know, character sincerity, emotion, getting the audience invested in characters, all while, you know, showing a blend of tones that can be achieved. Creature Commandos will also take place in several locations, such as Belle Reve, of course, Frankenstein's Manor, Frankenstein Lab, and Poco Castle, a failed fairy tale type of city. Now, CG, and this is really cool, so CG was used to set up the shots. However, the final product is fully 2D hand drawn animation. Future live action appearances of the Creature Commandos characters were taken into consideration when the characters were designed, of course, because if you're going to make an animated show, which as we know, you can kind of do a lot more in animation than what you can do in live action, or at least a lot easier, right? You kind of also have to take into account like, oh damn, we might have to get Dr. Phosphorus actually in CG mode potentially in the DC, All right, not potentially, I don't really see how you can do him without CG in the DCU live action one day, and he will be voiced by Alan Tudyk, the same way as how, you know, you have Sean Gunn voicing Weasel and G.I. Robot, but his actual likeness and, and physical appearance will be as Maxwell Lord. So other characters, prosthetics for David Harbour's Frankenstein will likely be very easily achievable. Well, not easily, but you know what I mean. And again, can't wait to see when those characters pop up. Now, Frankenstein and Creature Commandos is going to be a love struck version, which will be interesting. But here's a really big thing that I, I think was delivered like casually, but really made me intrigued. So the, the show, as we know, will begin uh, after Peacemaker's season finale from season one, but characters from the show will, they made a point of saying it, they will appear in the movie Superman. And, you know, they obviously mentioned how other characters of the comics could appear in future seasons. So other Creech Commandos characters from the roster, not just, you know, uh, the ones that we have in season one. So we know that Frank Grillo's Rick Flagg Senior is appearing in Peacemaker season two. Okay, cool, that's one of them. But we're gonna have uh, another one or two characters from Creature Commando season one appear in Superman. What? I mean, I guess the easiest guess would be Viola Davis's Amanda Waller, uh, given, you know, God knows what could be happening in the, the events of Superman with, you know, Lex Luthor and all the, the chaos that could be ensuing there. But with Waller being the most obvious, who else do you think could appear in Superman? I don't think they play a massive role. It's probably just cool, nice world building. You know, you would have already got Creature Commandos by that point, by the time Superman releases, but... I think that's going to be peppered in there a little bit. But the last thing we know is that Creature Commandos will be seven episodes long, all written by James Gunn. So I think that's everything there is to say. I'm liking what I'm hearing. I was kind of hoping we'd get a still here and there of which people saw at the Animation Film Festival, but I guess it's exclusive to them, which is a thing that we're used to seeing with events like this. We now need to talk about some very interesting set photos. But one of the heroes will be landing here 
But I think that this is more likely to be a scene with Eddie Gathegi's Mr. Terrific. I know he's not like flying like Superman or Green Lantern, but his T-spheres do allow him that ability. And now as for Metropolis, the of Cleveland page, they've also given us another look at not only uh, this bookstore, but also we have appliances and refrigerators, which, okay, cool. But also people are pointing out this store, televisions and hi-fi stereos. And what people are pointing out is that hi-fi stereos just aren't exactly necessarily a super modern thing. Of course, you can get like a sweet stereo set up these days and whatnot, but people are now thinking, could James Gunn be creating a metropolis that is somewhat uh, retro futuristic? And I would be willing to bet that he is. And I do think this matches up with exactly what James Gunn said on the Michael Rosenbaum podcast. And especially with my movies, with, you know, with, with how we're doing Superman, we're creating a, an aesthetic that hasn't, ex you know, existed before. So it's... What is that? No. Well, you'll have to, <laughs> I'll have to see it. <laughs> but I mean, it's about creating something different. I do feel like it would be incorporating little elements of that at the very least to really make Metropolis feel like this golden city. You know how like Batman, the animated series, I'm not saying it's going to go that far, but some semblance of that. I mean, some people were even questioning if Superman is set in the 70s and Gunn has said no, and he's even said before that it's set in present day, and I, I don't get why people are asking that. I think maybe that there are people who just haven't been keeping up as much as maybe we do here. Okay, guys, future Boba here. As I said at the beginning, I was about to upload this, and I'm glad I didn't just yet, because we have it from Deadline, Blue Beetle animated series in the works as DC Plots, the next chapter for the superhero franchise. So exclusive, Warner Brothers Animation and DC Studios are looking to continue telling Blue Beetle stories via an animated series currently in development. Sources close to production tell Deadline. Miguel Puga has been working on the project since early this year and will serve as the project showrunner and director with Christian Martinez set as writer. Now, Angel Manuel Soto and Gareth Dunnett Al Al Alcosa, I I'm sorry, I butcher names a lot, director and screenwriter of the 2023 film, respectively, will executive produce alongside John Rickard, who served in the same capacity on the film. Galen Vaisman, who was an EP on the film, will oversee the animated TV series for DC Studios. Now, DC Studios and Warner Brothers Animation declined to comment for this story and just to interject here I don't know if Gunn is going to confirm this over on threads right now maybe by the time you're watching this he may have given a response but it could be that thing that we've covered before and where since things are very early in the process and as we're about to get into actors haven't even inked a deal and whatnot it might be something he might not confirm right away talking of that many things are still in flux including contracts for any main cast however multiple have been approached and DC has received a positive response regarding returns. Deadline understands that the animated series, and this is interesting, will build on the movie, okay, so from the movie that we saw with Shola Mardwenia, developed under DC Studios' previous regime, but will divert from telling the same story. Instead, the show will create its own story, which, in success, could potentially lead to a return to the big screen for the giant blue bug portrayed by Shola Mardwenia, I hear. So, that's interesting. The movie itself was like a, not a one and done, but the story was like, okay, you have a fairly straightforward origin story, you have Carapax, who's the muscle of Victoria Cord. Victoria Cord wants the blue beetle for herself. I don't see why any of that origin, per se, would go against anything that Gunn wants to do in the DCU. So I guess no matter what, it is a strand of canon in some ways, shape and form, if you will. Just like how certain strands of canon that we've spoken about many times before, such as Peacemaker in this video, will be maintained in certain ways, such as him killing Rick Flagg and whatnot. So Shola Mardwenia's casting should very well be maintained. And I'm wondering now which strands of canon from the first movie would also be maintained. I think what the idea now is through diverting from the story if they had any plans for the sequel or where the character could go now they're just like hey yeah we, we, we're not necessarily like putting things from scratch but we're going to keep Shola on and we're going to do our own idea of where we want to go in the DCU with that character which is always something I expected anyway it's just in the animated format and I think they're doing it in an animated format as well because as they say at the end here if the animated story is a success then that could potentially lead to a big screen 
return for the giant blue buck, which I think is fair enough. Like, obviously, the first movie didn't do absolutely amazing in the box office. Uh, this was very much so at the point of the DCEU dying off. The fans really still enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. It was a fun little popcorn superhero movie. I think my favorite things about it were the cast and just the overall fun vibe that it had. So I do expect him to accept the deal here and be like, okay, what, you want me for an anime? Not, not a movie? Straight away? An anime series? Okay, we'll, we'll do that. Hopefully make it badass and then return in another project. Initially, a lot of us with our fan speculation were thinking, is he going to kind of appear in Booster Gold maybe? Are they going to put him in another project? Perhaps Titans? And that could still happen. It's just this could be the beginning building blocks for Shola Marduini's Blue Beetle return in his now new D DCU continuity version from what he was in the first movie. And again, I, I don't really blame them for wanting to do an animated series. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with going animated first, but again, it wasn't so successful and that could be due to a bunch of different reasons, but there is interest in the Blue Beetle character. And hopefully, I think maybe what they're thinking is with the potential success of the DCU, if the animated Blue Beetle series gets good numbers, I mean, it's literally canon in the DCU, then that will just show them, hey, man, like people were loving the animated version of Shola Marduena's Blue Beetle character in the DCU. We, need, we now need to stick him in this project or now give him a live action appearance in his own movie or shove him into something like the DCU Titans project. I, I don't know, but I guess they want to walk their way there before sprinting with that character after the somewhat lackluster, underwhelming box office for the Blue Beetle film, which, again, makes sense to me, and I think, if anything, it's kind of cool. We're going to see some badass Blue Beetle action in animation. So I, I think this is a win-win. I'm happy about it. I know this may seem a bit rushed, but I will probably go over this in more detail in another video or a DCU discussion series. Wait for any fallouts in case anyone else does talk about it, even though, as I said, I'm not really expecting Gunn to confirm this right away, but we'll have to wait and see. But for now, guys, let me know your own thoughts on Blue Beetle returning into the DCU, but through the initial stages of his very own animated DCU project. So we also have even more castings for the DCU. So Gunn said, uh, welcome to the DCU, Tim Meadows, playing Argus agent Langston Fleury in Peacemaker Season 2. So this kind of connects to what I was saying the other day. We have Sasha Bordeaux. We went over her history, how she's been involved with Batman in the past, been his bodyguard, been trained by Batman, gone out uh, on patrol with Batman to joining Checkmate eventually. So, you know, despite what we know about Creature Commandos and Waller not really being able to utilize people at that point in time, I do think what we're going to see in Peacemaker Season 2 uh, with this new Argus agent, for example, is Waller maybe creeping back into that, maybe going into the agency, maybe uh, creating Checkmate. We're going to have to wait and see. But it's not like Argus went away at the end of Peacemaker Season 1. It's just that they got exposed for what they were doing with Task Force X. But Argus is still a thing, and they're still operating. So with Waller still, and you know Viola Davis maintaining a role quite heavily across projects initially in the DCU, we will be seeing more and more Argus agents like this. And whatever is going on in Peacemaker Season 2 will still likely be like an Argus oriented mission that uh, Team Peacemaker go on. Now, as for Booster Gold, yes, Booster Gold is making some headlines over the past few days because Nexus Point News have got a brand new exclusive saying DC Studios keeps it righteous, adding the writing team for Booster Gold. Gold. So they're saying we've now heard from our source the following names are attached to write Booster Gold series. DC Studios is tapping into Danny McBride, John Carcieri, and Jeff Fraley, uh, the creative team behind the HBO Max original series, The Righteous Gemstones. Now, people seem to be very, 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 very happy with this, with the creative team that is going into Craft Booster Gold. But I have to admit, guys, I, I really do have to admit, I am not familiar with their work. And I think I need to change that because people are singing their praises here and they're super happy with obviously the comedic roots behind this team, how that will fit quite well into the character of Booster Gold, having previously done Eastbound and Down, Vice Principles, and the Righteous Gemstones, and his first foray into superheroes, which I'm sure obviously he's gonna bring those roots because again, um, 
I'm sure Booster Gold is going to be <laughs> quite a comedic series. But again, I don't have too much of an opinion on this. I, I just keep seeing people being very happy with it. But I guess I'm going to have to do my research and watch some of the background to kind of get a bit of a flavor of what this team can bring into Booster Gold. But it already feels very apparent to me with everyone's reactions online. So let me know what you think of this. And are you happy with this team going into Booster Gold? Now, Gun hasn't confirmed it right now, but I will say that uh, Nexus Point News has been quite on the head with their sources. Now, in the realms of DCU Batman news, well, we've got a little bit of a tidbit here because Jeff Snyder on the Hot Mike podcast was asked about um, Pattinson being a DCU Batman. Oh, God. Anyway, uh, he responded by saying, well, I don't know. I've heard that they're going with a different Batman for the DCU which we, we know. Um, but he also goes on to say, and I've heard that they may already have their guy. I, I don't know. Like he's playing quite coy and he's definitely inferring that he, he knows something. So he has heard that DC Studios has their Batman already. Now, is that a confirmed scoop? No, absolutely not. But just entertaining this for a second, it's kind of a thing that I, I kind of wouldn't be surprised if that was true in some way, shape or form, because it reminds me of an example I bring up quite a bit of how James Gunn, after seeing House of the Dragon, kind of low-key knew that he wanted Millie Alcock for the role of Supergirl. So with Batman being such a big character in the DCU, obviously we're getting the Brave and the Bold movie and Gunn being the co-head of DC Studios, and, you know, the head of the creative side of things, I wouldn't be surprised if he's thought, well, A, yes, we know he's thought about Batman a lot. God knows what's gone on behind the scenes. And if he's thinking, hey, I really kind of think I know who I want, even though we might not hear about it officially on a headline for a very, very, very long time. And, and the deal might not even be inked whatsoever, but could he know who he kind of wants to go for? And maybe he's chatted unofficially without a deal being signed. That is something that is very believable. It doesn't mean that it's confirmed even on Gunn's side, but he might know who he wants. And yeah, they might already have their guy. Now, some people are saying, I highly doubt that if they don't have a script, now, I've heard that behind the scenes, things about Brave and the Bold and Batman in the DC are a lot further along than what people think. As I always say, like, you know, no news doesn't necessarily mean no news. It just means that they're not necessarily ready to talk about it right now. And of course, behind the scenes, I think people forget that there's a whole architectural team behind DC Studios. It's not just James Gunn doing one project at a time. No, that you've got people simultaneously working on different series. For example, we've just talked about the Booster Gold writers. Uh, they've got the Lanterns team. And so with Brave and the Bold, I'm not saying it's a done script, but of course, they, they would have made some big headway by now with what the story is fleshing out to be and you know we don't know the writer right now but they they may have well cooked up a screenplay that is being refreshed more and more along the way and it's not impossible to believe that they could have a batman in mind even though gun has said that they won't cast until they have a script that still technically doesn't mean that, hey, I kind of want this person as Batman and I might approach them a bit more officially when the script is hammered down on the table. But at the same time, of course, working with what this actually is, we, we don't know. This could be false. Uh, Jeff Snyder could have heard something that uh, may not be true. They might not have their Batman in mind at all. But again, if I was the co-head of DC Studios in Hollywood, I'm a known Hollywood director. I know a lot of actors. It's not impossible for me to imagine, like, as I kick back, like, okay, oh, you know, maybe I want this guy for Batman. You know, I could have to wait and see. Maybe I'll ring him up, you know, just broach the conversation a little bit. But, you know, we're not going to go too far right now. But do I have a Batman in mind? Maybe. Yeah, maybe I do. I, I mean, sure, we might test a few front runners, but do you know what I mean? It's, it's just not impossible to believe that James Gunn could have a top pick. And speaking of Batman, ladies and gentlemen, um, well, as I covered recently, you know, there's a lot of hoo-ha about, oh my God, is the Batman 2 cancelled? Wait, or, or is the Batman part 2 and part 3 shooting back to back? Gunn replied, as I showed in the last video, no, that is not true. And Gunn replied since my previous video to this user saying, Hey, James, is the rumor true that Matt Reeves, the Batman part two, including the trilogy will be canceled? And I kept getting comments on my previous news roundup, even after showing similar responses from Gunn saying the Batman two isn't happening, laughing emoji times a thousand. And then we have Gunn here responding to this guy asking that question, saying, of course not, with an eye roll. He's literally telling you 
of course the Batman part two isn't canceled to the point of rolling his eyes. Like how many times I'm sure Gunn is thinking, am I going to have to say no just because you're not hearing loads of things about it. And obviously it was delayed until October, like the end of 2026. So not this October, not next October, but the October after that, you know, sure. You might not hear anything, but is it canceled? No, it doesn't mean it's canceled. So I'm just here again to say it's time to stop. Stop it. Stop it. It's in development. It's just, it's going to take a little while maybe before we hear some more solid things. And hopefully that will be around the fall of this year. Now, a couple of other mini stories to finish off the video. We have uh, the DC animated series, My Adventures with Superman, being renewed for a third season. And, um... I know I pissed off people when I said this last time in a news roundup, but I, ha I still haven't seen it. I still haven't seen it. I know. But good news, because <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to love it since people seem to love it. Um, and I have no excuse. It it's not got anything to do with me not liking it because I haven't seen it, but I, I, I will get to it. I, I swear. And we also had our first trailer for Watchmen, chapter one and two. And I have to say, I really like the look of this. The animation is really cool to the point. I know some people say, oh, I don't know about the animation, but to me, to those of you who, who have played Telltale games, like Batman Telltale, this literally looks like a movie of a Telltale game. Like, it, it, it's not exactly like it, but I'm sure many of you know what I mean. I think it looks really cool. I'm looking forward to this. Watchmen is awesome, and it's going to be really awesome to see its potential in an animated format. Again, they can kind of go crazy with what they can do in animation versus spending God knows how much on CGI and live action. So, yeah. What did you guys think of this Watchmen trailer? Let me know if you'd like me to cover it in the future, maybe review it even. But with that being said, I'm going to shut my trap and uh, get to editing this video now so let me know your thoughts on every single story in this video i'll be paying extra attention to that comment section because there's quite a lot that we discussed and if you're still watching right now hey i mean i know i say it every time but maybe you're gonna hit the like button i mean you can hit the dislike button if you want to but i'm surprised you got this far and you dislike it i mean Maybe maybe it's time you like it. And also consider subscribing for more updates like this. Would really appreciate getting more of you on board. Turns out a lot of you who watch the videos come back again and again and you're not subscribed. So check that button. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I really appreciate your time. Really appreciate you supporting the content. And I'll see you people of the DCU in the next video. Goodbye.